Alright guys, how's it going? So this is Josh with Josh the Techie, and in this video we're going to be taking a look um, at how to install a DHCP server on Windows Server 2012. Now first of all, what is a DHCP server and why do we need it? Well, without a DHCP server, when your computer connects to a, um, or here's a more easier way of thinking about it, when you're at home and you've got your just one router which does everything, your router will have DHCP in, uh, it'll have NAT in, so network address, address translation, it will do it pretty much everything for you so you don't need to worry about it. But when you come to servers you basically need to put all these in, in yourself because some things you do need and some things you don't need and if you had a router with everything in, well you, don't, you wouldn't use it all. So the great thing about servers is you basically customise what you need. Now say you've got five computers and you've got your one home router how do you think your router knows the difference between all the computers the router can't tell uh, the difference between just because they're, they're running maybe different versions of windows or different versions of operating system say for example those five computers are all running windows linux and mac okay none of them were running the same version of windows or linux or mac how would it tell the difference well, it does it by something called a IP address or an internal IP address in this case. Now, an internal IP address, as I said in a previous video, um, starts with um, one nine. Uh, can start with one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot ten or whatever um, you want it to be. That's a class C IP, and that is um, one of the most common for home users. And then you got class B, which is one seven six dot one six. Uh, 172.16 I think it is and then it goes all the way up to 172.32 I think I can't remember that one I'll be sort of stuck with that one and then you've got class A which is 10.0.0.1 um, and it basically goes up like that so pretty much what a DHCP server does is it runs on your router so when your computer talks to your router your router will give that computer an IP address now, of course, your router doesn't just give it an IP address. The DHCP server gives your computer the IP address, which then everything else talks to the DHCP, DHCP server. So, without a DHCP server, your the computer's connecting or the server won't know what that computer is or how to talk to it without it. Obviously, obviously your computer could send data, but they just won't be able to communicate that well because it wouldn't know which computers the ones that's one that's talking basically um, you'd be like standing in a crowd of a thousand people and then standing on a stage and then someone shouting and trying to figure out who it was it just wouldn't work <coughs> so like I said let's install the HCP server I've been talking long enough for this video so again we're gonna go to manage here and we're gonna go add roles and features and we're gonna go next next here again um, again as you can see that we got server one dot JTT or server one is that a dot yeah, dot .jtt .local, and that's the one we want to install it on and then we're going to install a DHCP server DHCP stands for Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol um, so we're just going to add this here and we're going to go next and we don't need to add any of this so we're going to go next again and next again and install <laughs> um, a lot of people when it comes to setting up servers they really think that it's really complicated if you just want a simple server that does DHCP, DNS, and Active Directory and things like that Play around for, with it for maybe a day and you'll soon grasp it. It really isn't that complicated. Um, to me, I've been working with servers for quite a while now, so I, I kind of got grips with everything. Um, but I'm still obviously getting grips with 2012, 2008 I'm more familiar with. Um, so, I mean, I'm trying to learn all the ins and outs of it. But Windows 2008, I'm probably more strong at using than uh, 2012 at the moment anyway but uh, more customers are moving over to 2012 now so as you can see here look um, DHCP is now installed so what we're going to do is we're going to click on complete DHCP configuration and we'll close out that one or we can't so basically we're going to hit next here and you can see uh, specify the credentials to be used to authorize the DHCP server in ADDS um, so yeah we're going to go with that one and we're just going to commit that and that's fine and that's done and we're going to close that and then we're going to click close here and as you can see look we got uh, configuration required install succeeded blah 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 
click that. That's fine. That's, that's we've done the configuration anyway, so that's fine. Right. So we now have DHCP running. As you can see, it's all green. Means it's running. That's the best thing about Windows Seven 2012. It's all simple. So um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on DHCP over here, and uh, we can see we've got one DHCP server running on this server, so 192.168.1.0, and it's online. Um, the performance counts haven't started. Performance counters are just here, um, and it tells you when it's last updated and things like that. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna right click. And we go DHCP manager, so dynamic host configuration protocol manager. Um, if you're trying to get into IT and services like that, it's really good to know all these names of uh, or acronyms. Uh, to know all these little ins and out uh, names, because when using them, it's just helpful. <laughs> so as you can see, we've got server1.jtt.local, and we're going to expand this. And like I said previously, previously we're going to be using IPv4. Um, and what we're going to do is we're gonna, you can see we've got server options, policies and filters. Now when it comes to DHCP you need to have something called a scope. Now like I said to you before um, about the class A, B and C IP addresses a scope is basically um, a range of IP. For example we're going to be dealing with a class C IP. Obviously, if you want to do a class B or A, you're more welcome. But with this video is going to cover class C. Now, class C is 192.168.1 or .0.1 or 1.0. I think it's 1.0. Um, and basically, what it allows to do is go up to 192.168.1.254. Um, so basically we can get, uh, well sorry, we can go 192.168.254.254 which I believe gives me something like 65,000 IP addresses which is something silly but basically that's what a, rank, a scope is and I'll show you what, this will make more sense in a minute. Basically what we're going to do is we're going to right click on IPv4 up here and we're going to go new scope, go next and we're going to give this scope a name so I'm going to call this default scope. And now this is the range of IP addresses that the scope distributes. So I'm going to go 192.168.1. I think I said 20 in a previous video. Um, so basically, the first computer that gets an IP, um, I'm not entirely sure if it'll be 20 or 21, but when it first gets one, it will be um, the first computer that connects will have the IP of 192.168.1.21, I think. And basically, you can see it's putting our subnet mask there for us, which is really good. And the ending IP address, so for example, um, if I work, did it this way, 1.40, you can see the range of addresses the scope distributes, okay? The scope being, being the DHCP server. So you can see here that there's 20. So 20 computers could connect before the DHCP server would go, uh-uh, no, too many computers. Obviously, if you're the reason why there are different classes out of IP is because there are you know businesses might have thousands of computers, um, and it, when it comes to having 10.0.0.0, it's just easier in some ways, I guess. Um, I tend to stick with the the, the class C because, to be honest with you, the businesses we work with aren't going to run out of class C IPs. Um, so basically, I'm going to start this at 20, and I'm going to end this at 254. 254 and we're going to go next um, the range you specify is too large for the single scope I'll tell you what I'm going to shrink this down I'll just give it one I'll give it 254 IPs that's fine um, or 234 as I should say because it's 254 minus 20 um, an exclusion is basically um, obviously we did the range of 20 to 254 an exclusion might be 20 to 30. So we could exclude 192.168.1.20 all the way to uh, 192.168.1.30 and then add that and then basically um, any um, computers that join the network will start at um, 31, 32, 33 and go up like that. 
that's why um, that's what an exclusion is for. To be honest, I never use an exclusion because, as you can see here, I started at 20 anyway, and my IP, just because the DHCP server isn't giving out that IP doesn't mean that you can't have it. For example, just because this is starting at 1.20 doesn't mean that I can set a, a static IP, or like I did with the server, sorry, at 192.168.1.10. Um, just because the IP scope isn't told it, telling it to give it out doesn't mean it won't accept that. Obviously, if you're on a different subnet, so a different class of IP, then yeah, um, it won't accept it. You need to make sure that all the IPs on your network are on the same class and the same subnet, otherwise they just won't talk to each other. So obviously we're on a 24 base IP here. So again, not going to worry about that at the moment. Now, uh, a scope, uh, sorry, a lease, um, basically what a lease is, is it's a time of where, um, let me think here, a good way of explaining it, it's how long, when you're, when a laptop joins a router for example, or a router that contains, you know, it's a normal home router, just that contains DHCP, DNS, all the other little, well, maybe not DNS, but uh, contains um, all the little features, it's a normal home router that you buy from PC World or something like that, Staples. Um, when your laptop talks to that, that router will give your um, computer an IP address, right? 192.168.1.30 or 184 or whatever it's going to be. Now, obviously, if it gives it that IP, your um, laptop um, will have that IP for as long as it's online. Um, and basically, what this is saying here is how long do you want it to get? How long do you want the DHCP server to give out the IP for? So, for example, you connect your laptop to a router. It gets 192.168.1.20. Here, it's saying it will give that IP to that computer for eight days um, until it changes. Um, so, as you can see, look, it says lease durations could typically be equal to the average time the computer is connected to the same physical network. For mobile networks that consist mainly of portable computers or dial up cli uh, clients, shorter lease durations can be useful. Likewise, blah, 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 blah. So, basically, um, even if you turn off the computer and it doesn't detect your laptop for four or five days, it will keep it on for eight days. So I like to turn this down only by one day to a week maximum. That way, you can only have as many devices um, that have. So you mean I mean like uh, if you've got clients coming into your office constantly all day, um, coming in with um, you know problems with their iPhones, laptops, things like that, connecting to your network. You will only have seven days worth of um, IP address reservations. On your router, so obviously, if you are having people in all the time and, you want, and they're going quick, keep it down to maybe one or maybe a couple of hours. But if you've got um, work employees bringing their laptops, they're going to be bringing them in all the time. Maybe hire up a little bit. So I hope you understand my my little um, way of explaining it there. <laughs> um, like I said, just drop a comment. Well, like I normally say, drop a comment below if you've got any questions about it at all. Um, configure the HP options for scope now right this is what we do want to do this is really good so we're going to hit next so basically what is the IP address of the the router uh, default gateway really so it's one in my opinion in my opinion in my situation it's 192.168.1.1 that is the router downstairs hit next and as you can see this is fine here it says the uh, domain name and DNS servers as you can see it's already put in the IP address here because that this server is the DNS server so um, that's why it's already put that in for us we're gonna hit next obviously if you ha do have more DNS servers then put them in Wins server now Wins is like a really old version of um, DHCP um, years ago it was used not really used at all now so it's only optional if you want to use it and it says do you want to activate the scope now so we're gonna hit yes and finish and as you can see look we now have a scope of 192.168.1.0 um, and if we go to uh, address pool you can see the start IP address is um, 192.168.1.20 to 192.168.254 so that will give us 100, uh, 234 IP addresses in, um, or allow us to have con uh, at the same time have 234 computers on our network uh, maximum basically 
and then address leases this is basically shows you all of, if I connected my iPhone for example to this DHCP server then my iPhone IP address would come up my name how long it will be till it comes out and other information uh, obviously on the categories up here and if you set reservations they're here policies uh, sorry scope options these are the little options we've got in like router my IP there DNS server is this server but what you need to think about it is not to put the loopback address here so the 127.0.01 don't put the loopback there because this is what gets set on the client machines when they connect to the domain so basically if you put a loop back there when it connects to the client machines the client machines will have a loop back set up as their value on their server on their PCs and their PCs would think their laptop is the DNS server so it wouldn't work so make sure you put the internal IP to the DNS server there and then obviously the DNS domain name is jtt.local uh, and obviously if you want to set up more policies you can so there we go that's pretty much it with DHCP um, there's not really a lot you can do with it um, obviously you can have more scopes if you want you can reserve ranges you can reserve an IP so for example um, say you're um, you you run a big internet cafe and you have maybe nearly 234 people coming in every one time um, and they're all using their laptops and say you've got a really important person coming in um, you know if they come in they'll want to be able to use the internet so what you do is you might reserve them an IP address so then when you go onto their computer you then um, uh, set their IP to be a static IP or with that IP address um, so that obviously um, they can get online which would take priority over, over other the users so that's why reservations are good um, obviously reservations um, probably not used that much I guess but could be handy in some in some ways I guess but that's pretty much it really on this video uh, we set up DHCP we now set up Active Directory and Domain Services so our server is coming in together really quite well now so um, in the next video we're actually going to connect our client to the domain and pretty much should be the last video of the series because after that we can then look into setting up some extras in Windows and get onto those bonus videos I was on about so like I said next video we'll join a client machine which will be Windows 7 to the domain and then um, after that um, we can set up things like VPNs and stuff like that so that's going to be quite cool so uh, thank you very much for watching this video if you enjoyed it then give it a like if you want to see more from this series give, uh, subscribe and if you've got any questions or comments or anything like that then uh, please well if you've got any questions or want to give me some feedback please drop a comment below um, and I'll try my best to answer it for you so thank you very much for, thank you very much for watching take care bye bye